Hey everybody, we're back again with another C++ lesson with my son, Alex. How's it going, Alex? Good as always. Hello, everyone. Yes, great to see you over there in sunny Florida. And I know. Yeah. The, the, crazy, the crazy thing is that if you look at a US map on the Weather Channel, you see all blue and then Florida is just this little, little bit of red. There's just a little bit, you know, we got the summer all year. I know. I'm jealous. It's cold, <laughs> cold as heck out here in England. Um, but anyway, we're not here to talk about the weather. We're here to talk about C++. So uh, we love C++ and we're going to talk about another important concept today called inheritance. Uh, have you ever heard of inheritance before? No, but I hear it's a, a scary topic. <laughs> Yeah, it can be scary, uh, but we're just going to keep it very simple for now. So we're not going to go into the depths, into the scariness just yet. And uh, we're going to keep it nice and simple and just introduce you to the concept. So I'm going to share my screen now. And now you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. So... Yes, today we're going to talk about inheritance, and this is just an introduction. So this is just a basic concept of inheritance. And to give you an overview of what we're going to do today, we're going to do a high level overview. We're going to do some basic coding concepts, and we will do a practical walkthrough. So what is inheritance? So inheritance is a way that we can use um, a existing class that we've already created to create a new class and inherit the behaviors of the class that existed before. Okay, so let me uh, rephrase that in a less complicated way. So we have one class, let's say this class is dog. And mm -hmm. what we could do is we could create a new class that takes on the characteristics of dog but then we can further define things that we may want it to do that dog is not able to do. Okay, so we may have uh, a dog class and then we may have a French Bulldog class. We might have a Labrador Retriever class, might have a Chihuahua class uh, mm -hmm. that all inherit from dog. Okay, so dog is an example of what we call a base class or a parent class. So that's the class that is the class that has the general kind of behavior. And then we have all of these other classes that may inherit from, uh, from the parent class. And these are called derived classes or child classes. So a derived class can call the public methods of a parent class. There are some caveats to that, but we are going to keep it simple for now. So high level concept, as we discussed before. So we have uh, a dog and then we have a French bulldog, which is a type of dog. OK, mm -hmm. so uh, taking that into a coding concept, we could have a class that's dog. It could do uh, dog could do things like maybe it could eat, maybe it could sleep. OK, all dogs would be able to do those things. And then we have this class called French Bulldog. And as we can see, we have the colon and then we have public dog. So I'm not gonna discuss uh, if we do private inheritance or what we call protected inheritance. Those are, those are a little bit different. Uh, they give different privileges to what's accessible and what uh, different parts of our code can see, but I'm not gonna go into that just yet. I'm just gonna keep it public, keep it keep it nice and high level. Sure. So, uh, so French Bulldog uh, inherits from dog. So what that means is that French Bulldog is a dog, is, okay. is a dog class, it's inheriting from dog. Like a branch. <clears throat> yeah, like a branch, exactly. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's something that French Bulldog does that is specific just to French Bulldog that uh, maybe we don't want in our parent dog class. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> any questions about that so far? So this is, so other than the, the colon public dog, this is more of a, 
a concept rather than uh, something specifically you code. It's it's kind of hard to explain, but um, it it seems to be more of an over overarching concept, basically. Yeah, <clears throat> and there are um, there are ways. So this is kind of the foundation of an area where we can that we can build upon. So there are things like what we call abstract classes, uh, hmm. pure virtual functions, things like that. They're a little bit more complicated. All of these things build off of uh, build off of this concept of inheritance. And okay. can you can you do the I guess the second derivative? So a class French bulldog, I don't know, blue. And then that would derive from French bulldog, which would derive from dog. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And depending on the access, then uh, then that would depend on whether you could call the base class method uh, from from dog or, or not. So uh, it depends on what sort of access that you give it that public, private or protected uh, access. Okay, but we don't want to go too deep. But yes, you could do that. Okay, so the big thing to understand here is that French French bulldog as a class is uh, is a dog is is inheriting from dog class. So it is a type of dog. Okay, and you want to do this when you want to take on behaviors of a of a certain class and then perhaps expand upon those things that you want the derived class to do. Okay. Any questions about that? Nope. Okay, cool. So we'll walk through a couple examples of this. So here we have some code that we wrote in our last tutorial, which I can't remember what it was on, but uh, essentially we have this class, it's called car. And we have in here, we had an enum class where we could define whether it was an electric or a gas car. Okay. So another thing that we could do is we could, we could pull this out, right? We could say, okay, maybe car is going to be the base class and that maybe we have some methods like start, uh, or void drive. Right, uh, and that now we have a separate class that would be called, uh, I'll just call it gas car. Sure. And once again, we're just gonna talk about public access for now. So gas car is a type of car. And then maybe we have something that only gas car could could call, maybe it might be charge, right? Because, uh, or no, sorry, uh, void fill, uh, fill tank, right? Mm -hmm. Fill tank with gas. And I got to mark that specifically public because if not, uh, that will be private by default. And then we have another class that we could call electric car. Once again, is inheriting from car. And then we might have something like void charge. So this is this is just a, a, a naming conventions question, but I noticed that when you when you you name classes, you don't um, you don't name it the same way as you do methods. So for example, void fill tank you leave the first letter uncapitalized and then the second word is capitalized, but you don't do the same thing for class. Is that just a, is that intentional? Yes, that is intentional. So normally a class is capitalized uh, as the first letter. Uh, that's the, that's the normal kind of convention, I guess you could call it. And then you can, you have different conventions for uh, how you do methods. So mm -hmm. people do it all types of different ways. Uh, some people do. Uh, so this, this, uh, this convention is called camel case, which is where the first letter is lowercase, then subsequent first letters of each word thereafter are capital. So if I did 
something like this, fill tank with gas. The first letter is lowercase. Subsequent first letters of the first word are capitalized. I, I personally, sometimes when I code, I do fill underscore tank. Yeah, so this thing. is this is what's called snake cakes because mm. uh, it looks like a snake. Uh, so, so yeah, so that is another convention, one that I think the C++ standard follows, but uh, I don't like it personally. Mm. So uh, another another thing, just while we're on coding style very quickly, is that people have different conventions for um, for spacing as well. So, uh, so one thing that you might see is that I do this. Uh, so that I put a space if I have if I have a argument, I have mm -hmm. a space in between. Uh, actually, there aren't a lot of people who actually do that. A lot of people have it like this, you know, like that, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just different conventions, spacing as well. Some people do two spaces rather than four. So it's just different styles. So, okay. So now we have these two classes that inherit from car. And so now what I could do is I could create a gas car. Uh, I'll just call it gas car Ford. And then I would be able to call uh, Ford dot start. Yeah. I would, and then any any methods that are in gas car, but I couldn't call anything that was an electric car, of course, because electric car has nothing to do with gas car. Right? Mm, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so uh, so then we could do electric car, Tesla, and then we could do um, Tesla charge like that hmm. or I could do that I, or I could call any of the methods that are in the public section of the base class. So I could do start or I could do drive. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's really it. That's, that's really the basic concept. So I think that that's pretty simple, but like I said, it gets, it gets a lot more complicated when you start talking about uh, when you take this public and you change it to protected or you change it to private. Uh, but I will leave it. I will leave you with that for now. Uh, are there any questions about that? No, that's, I think that's gotta be the quickest lesson ever. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good one. Uh, and, and like I said before, it's one of those that uh, it starts off, complicated it starts off simple and then it uh it becomes more complicated quickly over time but uh yeah it's it's good to have that simple concept in your mind before you uh before you start adding on layers of complexity as c plus mm -hmm. loves to do sometimes yes yeah Definitely. and and to be honest i mean i don't things like the difference between uh public public inheritance versus private and protected inheritance, I have to actually look up a lot of times because, you know, who memorizes these things all the time unless you're using them all the time. So, uh, yeah, there are a lot of little caveats that uh, are good to Google when you're not sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, any questions? No, that was, that was really easy. I mean, yeah. I know it's just an overview, but it wasn't that bad at all. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, so if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please, please be sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Peace. Later.